SEO Tutorial 2019 Tips and Insights for Keyword Research, On-Page Optimization and What SEO is All About from Ranky's point of view. The best way to learn about SEO is actually go and see what Google is saying. Because Google is the most used search engine. And if you do things correctly for Google guidelines, other popular search engines like Bing or Yandex and so on, they will actually rank you high as well. But you can't optimize for Google and then optimize for Bing at the same level. You need to make uh, executive judgment on your part to say, you know what, I want to rank in Google. If that's the case, you follow Google guidelines knowing that other search engines follow similar guidelines as well but they run different algorithms so google says okay you know what here is what we want you to do that means do all the right things in terms of having a modern looking website that is mobile ready mobile friendly remember in 2019 mobile first index does not mean your website you know, if it's responsive, all is great. Mobile first index is something different. Having said that, you still must in 2019 have a mobile ready, mobile friendly website. That means your website renders well on a mobile device and it's easy to use on a mobile device. And most people make an honest mistake because they end up you know, learning through some so-called guru about SEO, right? When I think of SEO, I think of website optimization. That means it's everything that I see on that landing page, including the white space, images, text, links, search box, how things are spaced. All this is to do with SEO. Having said that, on-page SEO is very simple. Rank Your Blog does have tutorials showing you, including that PDF. Let's imagine how to rank in Google Maps in 2019. Let's go and search for that. I created that post recently because I'm actually taking a break while I'm working to create these videos for Rank Your Fans. So I'm ranking on the first page. Some of the posts that I create how to remove reviews from Facebook in 2019, I may not be on the first position or even on the first page. Now, you may think, well, you're an SEO expert, as you say, but why are you not ranking for that? It doesn't matter because I'm still following the best practices. Someone else may be spamming Google, but that's a short way to rank in Google. What you want you want to rank in Google and you want to stay in ranking Google. Most SEO gurus, they don't understand how certain things work in terms of Google. And they end up saying, you know what, my ranking dropped. No, your ranking didn't drop sometimes. You need to say, okay, if Google is ranking me for the terms, that means it values my website important for those certain keywords. My website does not have much content related to Facebook and yet some website may be specifically answering all the questions related to Facebook if that's the case how am I meant to outrank them I, I still can but it's gonna take much different strategies and efforts but this blog post is helping rank your fans make sense what I'm trying to tell you is Create content for the best interest of your ideal visitors, ideal customers if you're operating a small business. Go and understand, let's imagine Locksmith in Houston. Search Google and it's going to show you the first result as Yelp. Now, why is that doing? Why is Google showing the first result as here? It's doing that analyzing keywords and analyzing the links going out from this landing page, analyzing the links coming back to this landing page, 
and is analyzing how people are interacting on this page. That means when someone searches Google, it can evaluate what it shows here. It may change it. Let's imagine today it's showing this. Tomorrow it's going to show, let's say, the third result. It's going to move it up. That's called the Google Dex. Most people who don't understand Google, they end up getting confused as to, you know what, my client is losing rankings. No, your client isn't losing rankings. It's the way Google algorithms change things to evaluate what's best to show. But if you do things correctly, then it's always going to show you on that first result. If people are finding the answers that they're looking for. To target keywords, you need to use tools to understand what that keyword is. What I tend to do always is define the keyword, understand where it's coming from, find synonyms, find synonyms or variations of the words, because you have to use those within the landing page that you're targeting some keywords for. The tools like this here, etimonline.com you can visit that keyword planner tool is mainly designed for google ads customers but because it's coming from google you have to use it keep your money in your pocket don't spend any money with keyword spy all that business because that you're just going to waste your money if you do that because most of them are getting their data from google anyway because it's google search engine that's been searched the most on planet earth if that's the case then you have to use the keyword planner tool it's making available for google ads customers if you don't have google ads account you can create it knowing that you don't have to advertise with google to be able to use this tool then you have uh, answerthepublic.com you can go experiment it's making the data available in terms of long tail keywords and so on. Remember, you can use Google search to find those long tail keywords as well by experimenting with Google search box, by putting in you know, letters related to, you know, put the keywords in. Let's say SEO Google. And let me say, how about how or oh, people are asking these long tail keywords right i can say a i can put numbers in there to see i can say okay do people look for pdfs experiment with google search box knowing most of the other tools as in long tail keyword creators keyword spy all that business is basically using the same data but when you're using google search box to do that research you end up seeing you know, other information as in what Google is showing. People also ask, that means somehow Google is saying, you know what, these keywords, people also ask these type of questions related to those keywords. Then it's in your best interest to say, okay, can I retarget them? So do your keyword research along these lines because you'll get better results. I'll show you what I do for a valued client, right? So we end up saying, okay, you know what? What is it? What is the keyword? What people are searching about it? So that you can create better content. Then you have Google Trends. You can use Google Define feature to see what Google is saying about the keyword, look at synonyms. Some of them will be appropriate for you to use on your landing pages. But remember, you create the landing pages for people. In 2019, work on many different things. Your on-page SEO is simple, as described on Rank Your Blog. In five minutes, you can basically do on-page SEO. We end up getting many emails saying, you know what, I've done SEO on my site, but I'm not ranking in the first page. That's because, quite honestly, no, you haven't done SEO on your page or on your website. 
or else you'd be ranking in the first page. Make sense? Now, what if you're targeting very competitive keywords? Then you need to say, okay, I need to do, you know, deeper SEO, right? Deeper optimization. But all of SEO starts with understanding keywords. And then you create the content for people, optimize your images. I'm not going to cover that in this video because your alt attributes are searchable by Google. That means HTML images do have alt attribute as we can see. And now these are words. That's why images are very important, not just for Google, but images, you know, they send out visual messages for your website visitors. So then once you do your keyword research, do your own page SEO, focus on images, write for people, link, don't be ashamed to link out. Surely not to your competitors, but related content that complement your content. Because if it complements the content you're creating, why not link here? Here you may be thinking, you know what, Rankia, I watched some of your videos, I already know what you're saying. Then let's take a look at a couple of other things. When you create PDF documents, okay, let's just take this as an example. Let's say PDF. Let's say SEO PDF. I do have it. I'll just show you a couple of tips and tricks here. Because PDFs are PDFs, right? You may think, you know what? My business, so your business, you may think, I'm going to create an infograph. If that's the case, let's download this. I'll download it to my desktop. Now, that's a piece of content. And Google can analyze pdfs if that's the case these are text but you can include links within pdfs okay so that's still a link because links are important but not the way people make it out to be because most people say backlinks are important because they try and sell you backlinks how do you get backlinks well create the content that's shareable make it easy for people to share ask people to share share content you create on your own social media platforms if you're operating a youtube channel and creating videos then it's surely going to be related to your business website if that's the case the video descriptions are a good place for you to then give interesting content for people describe the video but within it you may link one link to related content in this example do i link back yes i think i do link back to my website knowing that google will follow that link anyway because that's what google does it follows links so that's a see i just use my content to gain a backlink that's natural I use my social media profiles to get a backlink that's natural. I can create PDF. I can advertise PDFs. Yeah, meaning I can advertise the URL that includes the PDF. And then, you know, find ways to get that content shared naturally. But don't buy backlinks because then you're running into big trouble okay if you're trying to rank and you're doing all the right things and you're still on the second page you can do a couple of things first go and analyze your competitors who are at ranking you look at their backlink profiles you know what ask yourself those backlinks are they coming from you know diverse set of websites are they related websites? Are they quality websites instead of spam? And so on. And analyze your own backlinks. Because if you worked with some SEO guru who sold you off-site SEO 
packages, then you're swimming on dry land. You're not going to get much results from Google rankings because Google is penalizing as in Google algorithm penalizes spammy techniques. That's why you need to follow our Google guidelines. So then backlinks are important and it's going to take a bit of time for you to obtain natural backlinks. Don't look for um, shortcuts. Let's imagine you're creating PDFs, then you can use technology available to you. Before you create PDFs, Illustrator gives you many different options. Windows, you can use attributes. Where is the attributes? I think it was attributes. Okay. Okay, let's say rectangle. I can put an invisible rectangle here. A link. When I save this document in PDF, when the document is in PDF format, I can have a link pointing back to my site as well. Now, some people will say, oh, if you do this, if you do that, it's not good for SEO, such as let's imagine. Okay, all right, all right, let's take a look at this one here. Some people they end up using plugins for WordPress, especially if you're operating WordPress. Let's look at this. All right, let me find another one. Local SEO. Let's take a look at this. Now let's save this image. I'll show you the desktop version. Let's open this up in Photoshop and let's also right click, go to properties. Windows gives you options to provide title, subject, rating, and tags, or even comments for your images. You don't have to use Photoshop. But if you do have Photoshop, then you can insert other information to your images. As I've said, some people, because they think, you know what, putting EXIF data is not important. Google has image guidelines as well, image, image publishing guidelines. So if you operate a website, let's say you're a photographer showcasing your work, then you're gonna have many images then it's best to read through Google guidelines. 1,000 words. Let's see. 1,000 words about an image. As you can see, many years ago, Google was saying, as in answering questions, what happens to the EXIF, XAMPP, and other metadata my images contain? Answer by Google. We may use any information we find to help our users find what they're looking for more easily. Additionally, information like EXIF data may be displayed in the right hand sidebar. If Google is willing to display EXIF data in its search results, that should prove positive to you. Somehow it looks at it. Now, at that moment, does it count that EXIF metadata for ranking purposes? That's irrelevant, whether it counts or not. Because it can understand it. And your job to rank in Google is to make your website very usable, easy to use, and understandable by Google. If I name my URL patterns like this, it doesn't make any sense. To people thus it doesn't make sense to visitors search console is your friend we have the new search console whereby you can analyze what's going on I'll show you uh, I'll share an insight with you 404 errors don't go and do 301 redirection like most website owners do okay don't do that you can watch rank uh, videos to learn about best practices. Sitemaps are important for Google crawling your website. 
so it's smart to submit one okay let's take a look at why is it showing an error privacy policy some urls inside mav have high response this high response why is that i updated my website recently that could be the case should i be alarmed no detect it then let it crawl it again what can i do in this example in this scenario i can delete the sitemap i'll delete it to just show you go and delete so that means you need to be um what's the word with search console be flexible page sitemap.xml let me go test first view test all seems okay then i can submit one now right okay the new search console gives you different options for sitemaps the sitemap links are on the left here you can enter the sitemap so let's refresh this page I'm going to delete the post sitemap just to show you using the new search console post sitemap.xml submit submitting sitemap okay so that's all done again so be flexible with search console but nonetheless if you do have the time then definitely use don't be overwhelmed with 404 errors most of them are natural second keep an eye on coverage reports you can see here my server somehow had 5xx error internal server error for these urls look at looking at this in for my website i'm not even gonna bother with this because these are tag pages my tags are not indexed in google as in google shouldn't cache this page it's not in Google's cache that's no problem you can control what Google indexes by using robots directives no index no follow you definitely need to read through Google guidelines for that before you start using this because if you get things wrong then certain pages that you're ranking for may be lost from Google index if that's the case you need to remove it with Google rankings remember as long as you have the content that's optimized as long as you're doing all the right things then google will always reward you okay search console is your friend keep an eye out for coverage report look at errors if there are errors definitely find out why in the world there are errors most things here such as warnings and so on yeah you can look at it but don't be overwhelmed Okay, it's the errors that you need to focus on with index coverage report. You can always inspect URLs and so on. In 2019, mobile friendly test, you can. I'll, because I'm running ads on this landing page, let me show you the front page for Ranker blog. You can use Chrome F12 on the keyboard to bring up web developer toolbar and see how your site will look using different devices you can always edit the device list depending on your target audience let's imagine people in korea may be using samsung more so than iphones if that's the case you may need to just focus on samsung make sense to see how your site looks on a mobile device samsung device then you can run network tests you can run audits you can look at performance performance is very important let's do performance here you got simulated fast 3g 4x cpu slowdown applied fast as in simulated so this tool mimics fast 3g access in Australia, we use 4G, and some parts of the world, they moved up to 5G now, right? So looking at these, you can run orders to say, okay, you know what? How fast does my website load? Now, that is very complex part of SEO. 
Meaning, all right, if you're not technically inclined to you know, change many things on, let's say, WordPress and most content management systems, by the way they work, some of them are slow. To speed things up with WordPress, you can use plugins. You can add new plugin for speed optimization and so on. Now, if you're technically inclined, then you can start using different techniques to speed up WordPress. And depending on the website, you may even change the way WordPress loads. You shouldn't do that. You should never touch core WordPress files. But you can use many advanced techniques to speed things up because that's what you meant to do for WordPress. In fact, rank a suggestion to you. Don't rely on plugins to speed up your WordPress site. That's never going to work. Don't rely on plugins to optimize your images because that's never going to work. Because images play an absolutely important part for website optimization. And most image optimization plugins remove a lot of details from the image. Okay, you can use PageSpeed Insights to you know, say, okay, you know what? A certain landing pages is very important perhaps your money-making page go and analyze that particular URL and then page speed insights optimize your images it's only gonna take you five ten minutes to do that but then you have a better optimized landing page instead of relying on plugins in terms of speed optimization yes in 2019 it's very important you need to get your website loading faster. There are many different ways to optimize a site. You may need to change the layout, including, you know, sidebar. Let's imagine latest posts here, right? For typical WordPress, that's using the posts widget. I actually created my own plugin that inserts structured data to that sidebar. But recently, I end up having, um, you know, not I end up having, but I can have show thumbnails. Let's do that so that I show you what happens. And you can see here, there is actually four different thumbnails that's going to be loaded when this page loads. That's not smart. That's four different requests that doesn't really add value to usability. If that's the case, let's just remove the thumbnails. Now, four less requests, the page will load a little bit faster because I end up seeing some websites loading 50 images and they're wondering why they're losing rankings. In 2019, of course, if your site is loading 50 images to show the landing page, Google doesn't want that anymore. It's only in your best interest to either hire someone to optimize page speed of your site or use a different theme or find ways to improve your landing pages because it will affect how your website ranks in Google. Speed is a ranking factor. And remember, there is no one ranking factor in Google. It's everything combined. Keywords, how you optimize the landing pages, doing on-page SEO, images, alt attributes, internal linking, very important external linking, backlinks coming back to your website, where are they coming from, what content are they coming from, is it PDFs, is it videos, is it blog posts, never buy backlinks because that's against Google guidelines, follow Google guidelines and rank your insights to get better results in 2019. I thank you very much for learning with Rankia and I'll talk with you in the next video session.